Have you ever wondered what will happen when Jesus returns for the second time? It's a question that has sparked curiosity and debate for centuries. Across the globe, people hold a myriad of beliefs about the second coming of Jesus and the rapture. Some anticipate a quiet, subtle return. Others envisage a grand spectacle filled with divine glory, and still others remain skeptical, unsure of what to expect or even if they should expect anything at all. But today we're not here to debate or dispute. We are here to explore, to delve into the deepest, most sacred corners of the Bible with an open mind and a thirst for understanding. We are here to investigate what the Bible itself has to say about the second coming of Jesus and the rapture. So pull up a chair, open your mind and prepare to journey through the pages of Scripture. Let's dive into the Bible to understand what it truly says about this event. According to the Bible, the second coming of Jesus is an event to anticipate with great hope. It's a pivotal moment in Christian eschatology, the study of the last things. But what exactly does the Bible say about this anticipated occurrence? Let's delve into some of the passages that speak about the second coming. In the book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 30 it says, Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. This passage paints the return of Jesus as a grand, visible event. An event that will be seen and recognized worldwide. The Apostle Paul also writes about the second coming in his first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. It reads, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. This passage not only echoes the glory and visibility of the event, but it also speaks of a resurrection. Those who have died in Christ will rise, and those who are still alive will be caught up with them, meeting the Lord in the air. The second coming of Jesus is thus presented as a literal physical return, a return that is glorious and worldwide, accompanied by a resurrection of believers. It's an event of joyous reunion, a moment of triumph over death, and a fulfillment of God's promise. But it's also an event that ushers in judgment. Revelation chapter 19 verses 11 to 16 describes Jesus returning as a mighty warrior ready to strike down the nations and rule them with an iron scepter. So the second coming of Jesus, as described in the Bible, is indeed a momentous event. It's a time of hope, reunion, triumph and judgment. A time that will change the course of the world forever. Now what about the rapture? What does the Bible say about this? The term rapture isn't used in the Bible, but the concept is there, clear as crystal. It's a fascinating concept that has intrigued believers and non-believers alike for centuries. It's derived from the Latin word rapturo, which means to catch up or to snatch up. The rapture, as described in the scriptures, is the event in which Jesus Christ will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. At this command, those who have died in Christ, those who followed his teachings and held on to their faith will rise first. Then, those who are alive and remain, those believers who are still walking this earth, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. This is a truly momentous event a turning point in the history of mankind. It's the fulfillment of a promise, a divine promise that Jesus made to his followers. In the Gospel of John, Jesus said, In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. The rapture, then, is not a random event or an arbitrary act. It's a part of God's divine plan, a plan that was set in motion from the very beginning. It's an act of divine love and mercy, a demonstration of God's faithfulness to his people, to those who have placed their trust in him. So <clears throat> what does this mean for believers? It means hope. It means that no matter the struggles, the trials, the tribulations they face in this world, there is something greater waiting for them. There is a place prepared for them, a place where they will be with their Lord. 
Therefore, the rapture is a hopeful event for believers as it marks their reunion with Jesus. But how will we know when the second coming is near? The Bible does give us some signs. It provides us with a forecast of the future, a glimpse into what to expect as the time of the second coming draws near. The first sign that is often mentioned in the scriptures is the prevalence of wars and rumors of wars. From the ancient times up to now, conflicts and disputes have been a part of human history. Yet the Bible warns us that as the second coming approaches, wars will become more widespread and intense. Nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. In addition to wars, the Bible also speaks of natural disasters as signs of the second coming. Earthquakes in various places, famines and pestilences are foretold. These calamities, both great and small, will increase in frequency and intensity, much like the birth pains a woman experiences before giving birth. False prophets are another sign. The Bible warns us that in the last days, many will come in the name of Christ, claiming to be the Messiah. They will deceive many, leading them astray with false teachings and promises. Moreover, the love of many will grow cold. Iniquity will abound, and the faith of many will wane. Despite these challenges, the gospel will be preached to all the nations, reaching the far corners of the earth before the end comes. It's crucial to remember that these signs are not meant to incite fear, but rather to prepare us. They serve as a call to readiness, an invitation to live our lives in a state of preparedness. They are a reminder that our time here is temporary and that we should live each day as if it were our last. While these signs are sobering, they are also a reminder to be prepared for His return. As believers, we are called to watch, to pray, and to keep our lamps filled with oil, eagerly awaiting the Bridegroom's arrival. For no one knows the day or the hour of His return, but we can live in readiness and anticipation, and that is the greatest sign of all. So what does this all mean for us today? The key message from the Bible is readiness. Readiness, as the Bible teaches us, is not simply about waiting, but it is about living. Living in a way that is pleasing to God and spreading His love to others. Let's consider the parable of the ten virgins in the book of Matthew, chapter 25. The five wise virgins who took oil in their lamps were ready when the bridegroom came. They were prepared and they entered into the wedding feast. The other five, however, were not ready. They had to go buy oil and while they were gone, the bridegroom came. When they returned, the door was shut. They were not prepared. This parable serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of readiness for the second coming and the rapture. It's not enough to simply believe and wait. The Bible encourages us to be like the five wise virgins, to keep our lamps filled with oil, which symbolizes keeping our lives filled with the love of God and sharing that love with others. Furthermore, in the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 40, it is written, You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect Him. This underlines the unpredictable nature of the second coming. We can't know the exact time or date, but we can live in readiness by keeping God's commandments, loving our neighbors, and living a life of righteousness. So the question is, how do we show readiness? We show readiness by living a life of love, kindness and forgiveness. By treating others as we would like to be treated. By helping those in need. And by standing up for justice and righteousness. By spreading the message of God's love and His promise of salvation. In the end, the Bible's message about the second coming and the rapture is one of hope, anticipation and a call to live a life of love and righteousness. So let us be ready not just in waiting, but in living. Let us keep our lamps filled with the oil of God's love, so that when the bridegroom comes, we are ready to enter into the wedding feast. So, we've explored what the Bible says about the second coming of Jesus and the rapture. We've delved into the second coming of Jesus, a momentous event promised in the scriptures, where he will return to earth in glory and power. We've also touched upon the rapture, a time when believers will meet the Lord in the air, a glorious reunion of sorts. We've discussed the signs of the Second Coming, a collection of prophetic events and changes that signal the nearing of this divine occurrence. From wars and rumors of wars to the love of many growing cold, these signs serve as reminders and warnings to us all. 
And most importantly, we've stressed the significance of readiness. The Bible urges us to be vigilant, to keep our lamps trimmed and burning, ready for the bridegroom's return. As we wait for these events, may we live lives that reflect our love for God and our anticipation for his return.